Here is the fifth lecture of our lecture series, Advanced Materials for Energy and Information Technology. In this lecture, we shall discuss about hydro and marine energy. Here is the first part of the lecture and in this part, we shall discuss about hydro energy. Hydel energy is the hydroelectricity. It is produced from hydropower. In the year 2015, hydropower generated 16.6% of the world's total electricity and 70% of all renewable electricity and was expected to increase by about 3.1% each year for the next 25 years. Hydropower is produced in 150 countries with the Asia-Pacific region generating 33% of the global hydropower as of the year 2013. China is having the largest infrastructure for hydroelectricity producing with 920 terawatt hour of production in the year 2013, representing 16.9% of the domestic electricity use. The cost of hydroelectricity is relatively low making it a competitive source of renewable electricity. The hydro station consumes no water, unlike coal or gas plants. The typical cost of electricity from a hydro station larger than 10 megawatts is 3 to 5 US cents per kilowatt hour. With a dam and reservoir, it is also a flexible source of electricity, since the amount produced by the station can be varied up or down very rapidly as little as a few seconds to adopt to changing energy demands. Once a hydroelectric complex is constructed, the project produces no direct waste and it generally has a considerable lower output levels of greenhouse gases than photovoltaic power plants and certainly fossil fuel powered energy plants. In this picture is shown the three gorges dam in China. The hydroelectric dam is the world's largest power station by installed capacity. We shall see some more details about the dams. This is the common mechanism of working of a hydroelectric power generation power plant. It includes a dam structure which shows that water is stored at an elevation and made to fall through sluice gates and penstock onto the blades of a turbine. This falling water turns the turbine blade and charges the generator to produce electricity. Here are shown the essential elements of a powerhouse, which includes control gates, penstock, turbine, generator, transformer, and power supply lines. Here in this picture is shown the types of hydropower plant installations. Present a hydroelectric installation range in capacity from a few hundred watts to more than 10,000 megawatts or 10 gigawatts. We can classify installation by the effective head of water, the capacity, the rated power output, the type of turbine use, the location and type of dam, reservoir, etc. The available head is an important determinant of the other factors and the head and the capacity together largely determine the type of plant and installation. The three types are low head, medium head and high head. The boundaries are fuzzy but high head usually implies an effective head of appreciably more than 100 meters and low head less than perhaps 10 meters. 
This figure shows the main features of the three types. Low head run off river power stations having relatively little storage capacity are dependent on the prevailing flow rate and can present problems of reliability. If the flow varies greatly with the time of the year or the weather. The picture on the right hand side is the Hoover Dam built in 1936. This dam on the Colorado River originally called Bowder Dam is 220 meters high and its reservoir Lake Mead holds 35 billion cubic meters of water. The 2.1 gigawatt power plant is at the foot of the dam. A hydroelectric project may be one of the three types, namely impoundment where water is stored in a dam and let out through the turbine to generate electricity. The second kind is runoff the river where there is usually no dam and part of the water, say in the waterfall, is diverted into a turbine to generate the electricity. The third kind is pumped storage. Water is pumped up into a storage and let out through a turbine when required. Here is shown the first type of hydropower plant project that is impoundment. Impoundment is the most common type of hydroelectric power plant and it is an impoundment facility. An impoundment facility, typically a large hydropower system uses a dam to store river water in a reservoir. Water release from the reservoir flows through the turbine, spinning it, which in turn activates a generator to produce electricity. The water may be released either to meet changing electricity needs or to maintain a constant reservoir level. Hoover Dam with water backed up behind the impoundment area and the head difference between the water behind the dam and the water on the downstream side of the dam creates the power along with the flow of the water released. The second type is diversion. A diversion sometimes called runoff river facility channels a portion of the river through a canal or penstock. It may not require the use of a dam. And the third type is pumped storage. This is another type of hydropower called pump storage and works like a battery, storing the electricity generated by other power sources like solar, wind, and nuclear for later use. It stores energy by pumping water uphill to a reservoir at higher elevation from a second reservoir at a lower elevation. Then the demand for electricity is low a pumped storage facility stores energy by pumping water from a lower reservoir to an upper reservoir. During periods of high electrical demand, the water is released back to the lower reservoir and turns a turbine generating electricity. A turbine is a rotatory mechanical device that extracts energy from a fluid flow and converts it into useful work. The work produced by a turbine can be used for generating electrical power when combined with a generator. A turbine is a turbo machine with at least one moving part called a rotor assembly, which is a shaft or drum with blades attached. Moving fluid acts on the blades so that they move and impart rotational energy to the rotor. Early turbine examples are windmills and water wheels. Gas, steam and water turbines have a casing around the blades that contains and controls the working fluid. Modern steam turbines frequently employ both reaction and impulse in the same unit, typically varying the degree of reaction and impulse from the blade root to its periphery. Hydraulic turbines may be defined as prime movers that transform 
the kinetic energy of the falling water into mechanical energy of rotation and whose primary function is to drive an electric generator. A cubic meter of water can give about 9800 joules of mechanical energy for every meter it descends and a flow of a cubic meter per second in a fall of 1 meter can provide 9800 watt of power. Hydropower is essentially a controlled method of water descent usefully utilized to generate power. Hydroelectric plants utilize the energy of water falling through the head that may vary from a few meters to 1500 or even 2000 meters. To manage this wide range of heads, many different kinds of turbines are employed, which differ in their working components. The main components of a hydroelectric system may be classified into two groups. The hydraulic system components that include the turbine, the associated conduit like penstocks, tunnel and surge tank and its control system, and the electric system components formed by the synchronous generator and its control system. Present-day hydro turbines come in a variety of shapes, as shown here in the picture. They also vary considerably in size with runner diameters ranging from a little as a third of a meter to some 20 times of this. Here we look at how they work, the factors that determine their efficiency and the side parameters that determine the most suitable turbine. Hydro turbine runners are commonly made up of stainless steel alloys. First in the list is the Francis turbine. These are by far the most common type in present day medium or large scale plants being used in locations where the head may be as low as 2 meters or as high as 200 meters. They are radial flow turbines, which means the water flow is inwards towards the center and modern turbines can achieve efficiencies as high as 95 percent but only under optimum conditions as maintaining exactly the right speed and direction of the incoming water relative to the turbine blades is important the second in the list is propeller or axial flow turbines these sweep their blades through the entire area which the water enters and are therefore suitable for very large volume flows and have become usual where the head is only a few meters. In such turbines, the efficiency can be improved by varying the angle of the blades when the power demand changes. Kaplan turbines are axial turbines where the blade angle may be varied to improve efficiency. Kaplan or propeller blade tips is made up of nitronic 60. It equals or exceeds the cavitation resistance of any other commonly used materials. Another kind of turbine design is Pelton wheels. These are the preferred turbine for sites of the type where heads above 250 meters or so. The Pelton turbine is in contrast to the reaction turbines discussed earlier. It is an impulse turbine operating in air at normal atmospheric pressures and is basically a wheel with a set of double cups or buckets mounted around the rim. The water passes around the curved valves and under optimum conditions give up most, almost all its kinetic energy. The power can be varied by adjusting the jet size to change the volume flow rate or by deflecting the entire jet away from the wheel. On modern Pelton turbines, the buckets are mostly of cast steel with 13% chrome but other materials and methods are also used including cast iron or alloy such as bronze or aluminum or injection molding with fiber glass reinforced plastic. 
Turbo turbines are a variant on the Pelton wheel where double cups are replaced by single shallower ones with the water entering on one side and living on the other. This is still an impulse turbine but is able to handle a larger volume of water than a Pelton wheel of the same diameter and gives it an advantage for power generation at medium heads. The cross flow turbine is another impulse type. The water enters as a flat sheet rather than a round jet. It is guided on to the blades, travels across the turbine and meets the blade a second time as it leaves. Here in this slide, the materials of Pelton turbine has been summarized. The different parts of the Pelton turbine are made up of following materials or combination of materials. These are the case material is made up of fabricated carbon steel to BSEN 10025. Runner is made up of cast stainless steel BS 3100 grade 425 C11. Shaft seal is made up of cast gunmetal labyrinth type seal. The bearings are made up of rolling element or sleeve type. Spear needle valve are made up of stainless steel internal components housed in a carbon steel fabricated or cast branch pipe. The deflector is made up of stainless steel plate. The materials of the runner and buckets are chosen according to the head, stresses, content of sand in water and other strain factors. For the large turbines, the main factors are cavitation, sand erosion, and cycle fatigue. Now we shall continue to the part 2 of this lecture.